Hey, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create an infinitely repeating color spectrum in Blender or any system that allows you to mix RGB colors based on parameters. The basic formula entails three sine waves that are out of phase by one third of a rotation. The mixing of these three waves produces this rainbow-like spectrum that repeats forever, and you can get a wide range of color palettes by changing the basic formula. I created this web app that allows you to play around with the formula and see the resulting color patterns. Once you have a spectrum you like, you can paint with it, or donate to my Patreon. There's a selection of presets at the bottom to get you started. Link is in the description. So, in order to begin creating our spectrum, start up a new Blender file and add in a plane. We'll use this plane to display our material. Just go into edit mode with tab and press SX to scale it up on the X axis and then go into object mode and go into our shading layout. Now press new to create a new material and the formula that we'll be trying to produce is sine X and to get our X value, we need to generate some coordinates. So press shift A and go to input and add a texture coordinate. Now we're going to be using the generated output node. So you can just drag that into our base color and you'll see the generated colors on our plane. Now we only want a gradient in the X direction so we can separate this value with the converter called separate X, Y, Z. And if you just drop that on the line there, you'll see it uh, separates our X value from the vector and we can see on our plane a black and white gradient and that represents our changing x value. In maths, we evaluate a function by starting inside the brackets and then move outwards from there. But in this node-based setup, we evaluate the function by starting on the left and moving to the right. And I'll demonstrate that by adding a math node by going into converter math and just adding it in between those nodes and then changing it to a sine value. Now nothing's changed because our scale is off, so we can just press Shift D to copy that math node and change it to multiply, and then just click and drag that value to move it up to something higher, and you'll see that sine wave in action. Now what we've actually done here is we've added 32 inside the brackets here to increase the frequency of our sine wave. So even though it's on the left of the sine wave, it's actually inside the brackets because we're starting inside and we're moving out. Now, if I wanted to increase the amplitude of the sine wave by adding a bigger value outside, I could, uh, I could copy this multiply and add it afterwards. And you'll see our sine wave gets very, very sharp because the amplitude has now become very, 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 very steep, like that. Now I'm going to proceed by deleting this amplitude math node and just reconnecting the sine wave to our color. And I'm just going to space these out a little bit. Now, currently we only have black and white, but we want RGB. So let's press Shift A and search for combine and there you'll see combine RGB. Now this is going to create an RGB color from three different values, starting with the red value, and we can see there our red sine wave. Now we want one of these for each of the values, for red, green, and blue, so we can duplicate our sine wave twice and connect those up to our combine RGB node, and we can see the color change already. And we can take our frequency node and just connect those up there. And now we're back to black and white because this is the equivalent of what we had before. What we need to do is change the phase of the green and the blue. And we can do that by just copying this math node and changing it to an add. And then you'll see as we change this value, it moves. But we want this to be a specific value, and that is one third of a rotation. And in order to get one third of a rotation, we can just click here and type in lowercase tau 
times 0 0.3333333. And that will offset it by exactly one third of a rotation. So we can just copy that and bring it to the bottom. And because we know this is one third of a rotation, we can just times this by a two to get one sixth. And then immediately we have our beautiful rainbow. And if we just shift that around, we can start getting other types of spectrums as well. For convenience, I just like to add in a, another one up here and just change that to zero so that we have um, another variable to play with if we need to. Now that we have our basic setup, we can start playing around with these variables to see how they affect our shader. So this affects the scale and this affects the phase of the red and you can get some interesting color combinations already. And obviously this affects the green and the blue respectively. And then we can just uh, undo that to get back to our rainbow. And now this looks very nice in a line, but what if we want it to um, be applied to a texture or something like that? So let's just add a, a image texture or rather a noise texture. And we can just take the factor and just drop it straight into the multiply and disconnect the other one so that it's not affecting it at all. And then immediately you can see a beautiful sort of camouflage pattern almost. And as we change the value here, we can get this strange sort of disappearing or rippling effect. And the further down you go, the less colors you'll see. And the further up you go, the more colors you'll see. But what if we want this to be infinitely loop looping so that as this value change changes, say you wanted to animate it or something like that, uh, the colors wouldn't get all squashed up or spread out like we're seeing here when we change this value. So if you wanted to do that, let's just take this down to a reasonable thing and let's add in a value. We wanna connect all these phases and change the phase all at once rather than changing this multiply value which has unintended consequences. So let's add in a value from the input menu and let's just take these three nodes and copy all of them down here and drag this value into all three and we can just uh, make some space there and then take each value from here and just drag it up into our phase math nodes. And nothing has changed because this is the equivalent of what we had before. But now we have this extra degree of control where we can slide this along and now we have this infinitely rippling rainbow effect that never scales or gets all squashed up and uh, you could animate that and uh, change the phase here to get some very, very interesting psychedelic color palettes that are completely organic and uh, not chosen. There is a downside to this method where you don't get to choose the colors, uh, in which case a color ramp would be preferable, but I actually quite like the chaos uh, and um, emergent nature of, of this setup. So now you're probably saying, Tom, it's all well and good that I can apply the spectrum to a static image texture, but what if I wanna paint with it? You're probably not saying that, but I have to say something to keep the video moving forward. So in order to do that, just disconnect this noise texture and press Shift A to add a new image texture and press New and OK. And we have just created a new all black image texture. And I'm just gonna connect this to our scale node and connect the UV output of our texture node to the vector input of our new image texture. And then with our object selected in the viewport, press tab and U and Q projection. And now we should be ready to paint. And there you can see our rainbow edges that are very nice and you can just uh, use the scale just to see that change and I'm just going to try reset these these phases here so it's tau 
times 0 0.333. There's our rainbow back again. And what would, would be really nice is, is if we had a brush that had a bit more of a fall off so that there wasn't such a, a large flat area in between our brush strokes. So if you just go into the brush settings here, we can scroll down to our fall off and hit this drop down menu and go sharper. And now our brush is pretty much all fallout. So now you'll have this beautiful large rainbow around your strokes and you can just um, alternate between white and black to uh, paint and we can just turn the strength down there and uh, let's change black to white and it's a, uh, just a nice way to be creative in Blender uh, and I'll show you how you can apply this to your models. So here is a 3D model of myself that I uh, made a while ago. It's still unfinished, but as you can see, I've already applied the material to it. And really there isn't uh, anything to it. There's no tricks. It's just as simple as recreating the material that I just made in uh, the Blender file with your model and then just unwrapping your model as you would normally with UV unwrap and then painting it. So uh, I, I'm not going to show you how to do that. There's lots of videos uh, showing you how to unwrap models, but I just wanted to show you that it could be done. And uh, here's another example of me just painting. Oh, if you hold control, it actually does the opposite color, which is uh, quite useful. So you don't have to switch back and forth between the colors. You can just hold control and just paint that way. And it's uh, really quite fun. So to end off, I would just like to show you a few tips and tricks that I uh, may have skipped over. So in order to animate the value that I showed you earlier that connects the phases of the three values, uh, you can just create a driver by clicking in here and pressing hashtag frame and press enter and then as it plays you'll see some interesting colors. This is just a track I was making a video. I didn't end up making anything but anyway. Uh, yeah, and that's a little bit fast so we can actually just change that by uh, saying times 0 0.1 and now as we play it it goes a little bit slower and uh, oh it seems as if everything is animated already okay so just some more thoughts when creating uh, spectrums everything will be repeated in the spectrum as long as the frequencies are the same as soon as the frequencies differ you'll start to get very chaotic results. If one of the frequencies of these three is, is out, you'll get a, um, a spectrum that does repeat, but not as often as if they're all the same. But if they're all different, you could get a spectrum that just produces chaos and, and doesn't uh, repeat or seemingly doesn't repeat at all. Um, so now if we, if we take this into paint, and paint you'll, you'll, and we just turn up the brush speed. You can also pre-use the keyboard keys to increase and decrease the brush speed, but you'll see that the colors, um, they're repeating, but they don't repeat exactly the same way each time. And uh, this really depends on how you've set up the colors. But I, I really like how each uh, spectrum is sort of un unique and, it's, and it has its own character to it, which is um, quite interesting because it's, it's an emergent color spectrum system, I guess. You can clear this and you can also decrease and increase the brush size with the left and right greater than signs. And uh, change the presets here. And yeah, if you've got, uh, if you 
happen to change the amplitude of something or the vert offset um, and you get, get some black lines, you can just uh, take those black lines out by decreasing the amplitude and then increasing the vert offset um, until you sort of get a result that ple pleases you. But it is kind of difficult to get exactly the colors that you're looking for. You kind of just have to go with what um, I guess the the formula is capable of. Anyway, I, don't, I doubt this will be useful for anyone, but uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Please uh, like and subscribe and uh, donate to my Patreon if you feel like supporting me. I've got quite a lot of work to do, so I'll probably only be making videos uh, much later. Thank you again for watching and goodbye.